are living with climate change every day and it is already impacting our health. What are the future scenarios and what can each of us do to cope with the impact of climate change? We are talking to Dr. Dermid Campbell-Lendrum today. Welcome, Dermid. Dermid, talk to us about the impact of climate change on our health. So some of the effects are really direct. So sometimes it's just too hot to be healthy. Uh, so we know that climate change is increasing temperatures, particularly in, in cities. Um, and anybody with a pre-existing condition, or if you are older, or if you have, you know, for example, heart disease, unfortunately, you're more likely to get sick when temperatures are very high or even to die in extreme high temperatures. So that's a very direct effect. We also see the effects of climate change on the environment. So those increased temperatures and changes in rainfall patterns in some parts of the world are, are drying out the environment, drying out forests, making it easier to have more and stronger and more severe wildfires. Now wildfires kill people directly, they also lead to massive levels of air pollution. And we know that air pollution is one of the biggest killers we have, it kills about 7 million people a year around the world, about a death every every five seconds. So there are those more direct effects, but we also see climate changes making it easier to transmit infectious diseases carried by mosquitoes like malaria or dengue, or diseases carried in water, you know, diarrheal disease, cholera and so on. But the ultimate impact of, of climate change is in actually making some parts of the world uninhabitable. So either it becomes too dry to maintain agriculture, or through increased sea level rise, uh, we're actually starting to submerge islands, including some whole countries. And you can't really maintain good health when you're forcing people away from where they live. So Dermot, talk to us about scenarios that we are staring at. How will our health systems, our hospitals, primary health care centers, the entire health infrastructure, how will we cope with these impacts of uh, climate change on our health? Well, the scenarios are not good news because, and we already know, we've already seen a glimpse of this. So those increased temperatures I, I was talking about, the record temperatures that we're now seeing around the world, in a couple of decades' time, those will be the norm. And so we've experienced record temperatures in Europe, we've seen heat waves across Asia, and we've seen directly people you know, turning up, overwhelming hospitals, um, and in some cases, in some of the historic events, even morgues overflowing with, uh, with bodies. So unfortunately, that's part of the, uh, the, the, the scenarios that we see for the future. We also see more of the world um, being suitable for malaria transmission or for, uh, for dengue transmission. So we have to be able to respond to this. And we're unfortunately committed to a certain amount of climate change because of the greenhouse gases that have already been emitted. So we need to develop the plans and put into place the investments in our, in our hospitals, in the training of our health workforce, in order to, to allow them to protect people from the impacts of climate change that we're already seeing. And part of preparing our health systems for uh, this, uh, this the impacts of climate change is also making sure that they're resilient to the impacts of climate change. And in fact, in many cases, we can do two good things for the price of one by, for example, providing renewable energy through, uh, through, uh, through, solar, through solar panels for healthcare facilities, which is more resilient to, uh, to, to climate risks. It's cheaper and it also reduces the environmental impact. So Dermot, these are very overwhelming scenarios that you've just painted. What can we do as individuals to cope and to protect ourselves uh, in these future scenarios? Well, the good news is there's a great deal that we can do. And part of it is just being aware of the health risks of climate change. So in the, you know, the, the places that, that we live in, in Northern uh, Europe, um, those populations have not previously been used to the kinds of temperatures that we've previously experienced. Now, if we know that um, it's a potential risk to your health if, if it's an extremely hot day, then it's possible to, to protect yourself by hydrating, by staying out of the sun, by paying attention to, to weather warnings. So we all as individuals have to become a bit climate smarter in order to protect our health. So that's number one. The second thing that we can do is that many of the things that are important to reduce climate change are really good for our health. And we actually say that the Paris Agreement to limit climate change is potentially the most important health agreement of the century because 
if we are able to make a shift to a clean energy system or even as individuals, if we're able to, for example, walk or cycle to work or, uh, or school or to improve our diet so that they're more sustainable and, and healthy, that's really good for the planet. But much more importantly and closer to home, it's really good for your health. It's, it's not all on you as an individual. So one of the things we can do as individuals is to support policies and to support leaders who are able to make wise investment decisions that improve people's health but also protects the planet. Thank you, Dermot. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy and stick with science.